Please remain standing and remove your caps and face the flag for the playing of our national anthem performed by senior band and choir members led by Mr. Jeff Dewey and Mr. Jacob Oxley. May now be seated. Good afternoon, parents, families, teachers, faculty, administration, and students. Thank you all for attending the 2019 Annie Go High School graduation ceremony. My name is Brett Farmer, junior class president, and I will be today's master of ceremony. Today's first remarks will be given by this year's senior class president, Harley Anderson. Hi, everybody. I'm not that great at speeches, no matter how hard I try. So instead, I wrote a poem to help us say goodbye. First, I'd like to thank you for sharing our special day. We appreciate every one of you more than words can say. Today will be the final day we walk through high school halls, but we take with us years of memories we've made within these walls. We've learned together, loved together, succeeded together, and grown. And though we're parting ways for now, you are never on your own. Four years of special memories now have passed us by. We filled that time with so much joy, but it's gone in the blink of an eye. It's safe to say procrastination plagued our class this year. Everything was very last minute, and it's a miracle we're even here. From winter ball to prom and everything in between, we sang Sweet Caroline on the dance floor and jammed to Come On Eileen. When Mr. Rogers came around, he wowed us with his moves. He challenged Milo to a worm off, and the student body approved. Not every day was easy, and though we won't remember a ton, I'll never forget Delta, because Mr. Blood made it fun. Another important lesson that in life will serve me well is that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. The homecoming trampoline front flips to Mr. Schofield weren't sweet, but in the end, you've got to admit, they turned out pretty neat. As much as I'd like to joke, I'd like to be sincere in saying we've appreciated our teachers while we were here. The grace that you all show when putting up with petty strife is something I admire and aspire for in life. But back to reminiscing on the memories we've made. Remember a few months ago when Lenny got pepper sprayed? <laughs> Something I've observed is that our classmates like to dance, 
Jack loves to do his moonwalk, and Dane backflips at every chance. Our senior athletes rocked this year with four awesome trips to state. Our entire town was proud of them, and they did pretty great. We worked to come together for Eric and his mom. I think we all should try to be a little more Julie strong. We didn't always get along, but I think it's safe to say we have a few things in common on this very special day. One, we are excited to tell high school goodbye, but it's a bittersweet feeling and some of us are trying not to cry. Two, we are afraid of what is soon to come. You'll be okay, just never ever forget where you are from. Finally, we are hopeful of what our futures have in store. I know you will all do big things. Just get out there and explore. Now, I feel it's time to thank our friends and families. I want you now to ask yourselves, without them, where would you be? It's hard for me to say, but we've almost reached the end. And I'm so humbly honored to know that you have been my friends. I wish you all prosperity, happiness, and good luck. And I know that this is cheesy, but seriously, let's keep in touch. Thank you. District Administrator Dr. Julie Sprague will now introduce and present the distinguished alumnus to this year's recipient. Good afternoon. I'm honored not only to attend my first graduation as superintendent, but to attend my first graduation as the superintendent of the Unified School District of Antigo, and especially to attend my first graduation as the superintendent of the Unified School District of Antigo for the class of 2019. I am so proud of you all. Congratulations. My greatest honor today, however, is introducing Antigo High School's distinguished alumna, 1998 graduate, Stephanie Mock. The Antigo Daily Journal's own Lisa Hafes wrote an article for the Associated Press in 2012 detailing events that occurred nearly 22 years ago and changed the course of Stephanie Mock's life and her outlook. On June 14, 1997, Ms. Mock was involved in a brutal automobile accident that killed her companion, a 19-year-old Elko man, and left Stephanie with life-altering injuries. Their vehicle had run off the road on a dark night. The accident itself was not serious until the two exited the vehicle. They stepped on an electrical line that had fallen when their car grazed a utility pole. Ms. Mock's companion bore the brunt of the electrical charge, dying almost instantly. Stephanie was airlifted to the University of Wisconsin Hospital in Madison with extremely critical injuries. By the time she was well enough to return home to Antigo, Stephanie had lost an arm, was legally blind in both eyes, and significantly scarred. In some ways, though, Stephanie would soon experience a new beginning. After her incredible recovery and graduating on time from AHS, Stephanie Mock says simply, if you are already at the bottom, there is nowhere to go but up. And so began Mock's resolve to make a difference. She graduated from UWSP with a double major, devoted herself to public service, and earned her master's degree from Brown University. She eventually moved to Arizona, where she represented, represented Tucson in the State House of Representatives from 2013 to 17. Grateful for all of the experiences Stephanie may never have had if it, not were, if it were not for her injuries, she continues to travel, learn, and serve her community. 
With every professional and personal experience, Stephanie Mock hopes to inspire others to adapt and grow in their own lives. As her nominator writes, Ms. Mock is the epitome of Red Robin pride. It is an incredible honor to introduce you to our distinguished alumna, Ms. Stephanie Mock. Thank you so much. Thank you, I very much appreciate it. I'm just gonna get situated here for a second. Thank you very much. Okay, that's enough, we're good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, I really appreciate it. Um, it's been really interesting to come back to this community um, after so much time. I haven't been here in, on, the, on the stage for 21 years which is uh, longer than y'all have been alive, so that's fun. Um, but I, uh, I've experienced a lot in my life since then, and I'm, uh, I'm very excited to be back to talk to you all about it, um, knowing what it feels like to be in your shoes, knowing what it feels like to be in those gowns and trying to listen to someone who's 21 years older than you. Um, I've done a lot of amazing things in my life, some of them hard, some of them joyful and amazing. I've shaken presidents' hands. I've held the hand of somebody who lost their home and family in Hurricane Katrina. I've um, stood at the you know, side of somebody who's talked about uh, the ending of World War II, a famous general. I've talked to CEOs of companies, and I've been in front of uh, people who are homeless and um, talked to them about their lives as well. And so I've really experienced the full spectrum of, of life. I've been on all of the continents except for Antarctica. I've seen all of the states of this United States. Um, I've traveled extensively and I have um, lived a really full life since I've been here. Um, and what I can tell you that I've learned from that experience is um, summarized really briefly essentially from an interaction that I had a couple years ago with a bunch of high school students like yourselves. Um, uh, one of the 17 year olds asked me at one point, what advice would you give to me in this position? Would you have wanted to hear yourself? And there were two of us up there. There were two women talking to a group of girls. Um, and the other one I listened to first and she said, don't be as insecure, don't be as nervous, you know, really take risks, you know, go out and explore in your life. And I thought to myself as I was hearing her speak, that's exactly what I would tell you, but I did hear those things. People did say that to me when I was 17, when I was 18, and I couldn't hear it. It didn't make sense to me. Like, yeah, I'd love to be not insecure, cool, but how, right? And it was in that moment that I realized that the real trick was that the insecurity and the doubt and the discomfort that you're feeling is the price you pay for growth, plain and simple. It is the price you pay. So everything good, everything mature, everything comfortable is on the other side of struggle and discomfort. If you can embrace that, as a part of your life and realize how important that is to get to the other side, you'll feel a lot better about knowing why you're insecure, why you doubt what's next. And I thought that was really important to how I overcame what I did. Um, so one of the things I'd like to say to you today is a lot of people will stand up here and tell you how to make a living, and I will tell you it's hands down more important how to figure out how to make a life. So what you do with other people every single day, in every interaction, no matter how happy or sad you are, will make a difference. It will make a difference to them, and they might not ever tell you what, ma what you matter to them. In fact, I had one moment right after I, um, I have water here, so I'm gonna take a little breaks. Mm. Just being comfortable. Um, uh, where, um, I lost my train of thought. Let me just skip that and I'll get back to it. So the one thing that I would say is in the line of what I was saying is you've got to try new things. And again, that's uncomfortable. But um, 
it's part of how you have to learn. And the part of that is you have to be willing to be make, made a fool of yourself. When I traveled and I learned new languages, one of the <laughs> most embarrassing things you have to do is ask for a bathroom. And when you have to mimic that in front of somebody to figure out where they have to go, it's awkward. Um, when you have to ask your 70-year-old host uh, parent from Spain what the graffiti on the side of the building means, and it's quite vulgar, uh, it's pretty embarrassing. Um, you know, when you go parasailing for the first time and you end up throwing up on yourself, that, <laughs> it's embarrassing. Not my story, by the way. But you figure out what you can do and what you do like and what you don't like. Um, and that's really what it's about. Is, is figuring it out along the way. Um, and on more a serious note, I think that it's important to figure out how to ask for and how to receive help. I had a moment in uh, college where I was in the union and my, my shoes had come untied. And with one arm, I can't tie my shoes. I can do a lot of things, but that's not one of them. And I sat there thinking, I have a mile to walk home and I can either get blisters or I can ask a stranger to tie my shoes when I'm in college. Um, I chose to, to ask somebody. And they gladly helped because who cares? It's just a simple gesture. And what I realized in that moment was not only that I could get what I needed if I only just asked, but I also realized that inviting people to be a part of your story and to be a part of your life in really insignificant ways makes them bonded to you, makes them feel like they can give something important that made a lot of difference to me, but almost nothing to them. And it brightened his day and mine. And being able to receive that help gracefully made that interaction really key. And that's a really huge, important lesson that I had to learn along the way. Um, we really don't do it alone. I remember at one point in, in AmeriCorps where we had to build houses and trails and teach kids, one of the things that I ended up doing at the end was figuring out how, to, like I can't hammer a nail, there's no way I thought I would have to quit. I would have to give up my stipend, I would have to fail and hang my head home as I was going home. And instead of saying that that was the only thing that I needed to learn, I figured out a way to be on the team that wasn't equal, but it was equitable. And that just basically means fair. I never hammered a single nail, but what I did is figure out how to become useful to the team in different ways. So I ended up figuring out where all the stuff was and who the volunteers were and whether we should ask Mr. Jim or Mr. Bob how to figure out the soffit or the foundation. I knew that and I contributed to the team. And that's what relationships are like. Not everyone is gonna take out the trash. Some people have to do the dishes. And that's fair, that's equitable. Don't expect equality. Expect fairness. Try to contribute in ways that make you useful. Um, and along those lines, I really wanna say, when you don't do it alone, I'm happy to be standing on this stage because my parents, my grandparents, my siblings are all in the audience. And I want to thank each and every one of them for various things. My mom for everything. My dad for his infinite patience. My grandfather for taking me to all those appointments and telling me family stories along the way. My grandma for just simply brushing my hair when I asked her to because nice, things are nice. Um, my siblings for keeping me grounded because they do that. Um, and then more importantly, the town of Antigo because when I had my accident in 97, you all, and I'm not sure, I'm sure there's a couple of you in this audience, helped raise money for my family when it was really important and we really needed it. And because of that, I was able to go to school. And because of that, my parents were able to pay the rent. And because of that, we were able to be successful. So I really wanna just thank each and every one of you for being a true community. And please give yourselves a, a round of applause for that. Thank you. When I was in the legislature, <laughs> one of the things I learned going to talk to constituents, I had this one door that I went to and he was bound and determined to be against me. He hated everything I had to say because he assumed what I knew was wrong, it was opposite of him. 
And I took the time to have a conversation with him that didn't agree with him all the time. But I told him what I felt, and I was straight up. You have to embrace conflict as not inherently bad. How many times have you sat in front of one of your friends where they had their phone out and not paying attention to you when you were with them and you wanted to say something, but you didn't because you didn't know how without being insulting or losing the friendship? Or something bigger than that, right? We have to figure out how to have those conversations, how to tell people what we feel even if it's not the same as they feel. That's a huge lesson for me, and I continue to be better and better at it as I learned how to argue better with my colleagues. Um, and I know that y'all are, by this time, saying, okay, I'm done, I'm done, stop talking. Um, but I just wanted to tell you um, uh, maybe two more things. And one is also very serious. About gratitude. I remember after losing my arm, I was angry, and I was sad, and I was resentful, and I was all the things you expect a person to be. And then about a year later, I went to a doctor's appointment, and the doctor casually let slip that um, he'd almost not saved my other arm. And I just remember thinking, I went from being angry that I didn't have one, that I lost something, to being really grateful that I had the other one. And it's okay to grieve over loss. It's okay to be angry that that happened. But you also, while you have that loss, also have something to be grateful for. And even if it's just that basic, remember that. The other thing I'll say, lastly, is that your life starts today. You don't have five years, your 10-year plan, to figure out when to be happy, when to say that thing. Don't wait. Every day of your life, this summer, the next semester, is a new day to reinvent yourself. It's a new day to figure out what you want to be and what you don't. And so don't think of every day. That could be, that could be really heavy. It feels, oh my god, every step I take is, is too heavy, and it may, means that I'm going to fail. It, you could also take it the way that it's light and that you can change every time you wake up. You can choose to be nicer. You can choose to say that thing to your friend. You can choose to thank your family. You can choose to change direction, quit your job. But don't wait. Don't wait for it to happen. Don't wait to be happy. Don't wait to get what you need. And with that, I want to thank you again for listening. And I want to congratulate the class of 2019. Congratulations. Senior choir members, along with members of Canto Voce, will now perform You'll Never Walk Alone with Climb Every Mountain, arranged by Mark Hayes and led by Mr. Jacob Oxley.
Sebastian Niskoviak, this year's salutatorian, will now give the salutatorian address. Hello. I would like to start by thanking everyone for coming this afternoon and helping in celebrating our graduation. Coming into freshman year, no one had any idea of what to expect. We didn't know who our friend group would consist of, and we definitely didn't know what classes to take. But we all had one goal in mind. That was to graduate. That brings us here today. The last four years of high school sped by like a car on the interstate, driving past the lights of a city. We were on cruise control during high school, yearning for the future. The future begins today. Today, we begin embarking on a journey without the comfort of our families. In the next step of our lives, whether that means entering the workforce, enlisting for duty, or planning to attend a technical college or four-year university, we need to learn to react to confrontations. We can't come home and complain about our lousy days to our parents. We have to deal with that ourselves. In our senior year, we were required to create a senior portfolio presentation. Our presentations contained our plans for the future. I believe it was ideal for us to construct this portfolio. We needed to begin thinking about our plans so scheduling classes in college would become easier. It's all right if your plans change in the future. And then I would like to finish by wishing all my fellow classmates good luck, and I hope you all succeed with your future endeavors. This year's valedictorian is Elise Incha. Please welcome Elise to the stage to address the class. Good afternoon. Finally, here we are. Graduation day. Finals are over, placement exams are all taken, and we still came out in one piece. Congratulations. When I sat down to write this speech, I really wasn't sure what to say. I mean, what is there to say to a group of people you've known for years, or maybe haven't known at all? I'm in the same boat as you are, half proud of myself and half terrified of what comes next, stuck in this moment in front of you, giving a speech I'm seriously underqualified to give. You know what this is like? Th giving this speech is like signing a yearbook. Through the years, as Emily and Evelyn and the rest of the yearbook crew will be happy to know, I have bought my fair share of yearbooks. Call me dramatic, I think it's warranted at this point, but I love paging through old yearbooks stuffing old ribbons and newspaper articles in the pages to always remember the little things along with the big things, paging through them late at night when I miss the graduated seniors. I decided to go through my old yearbooks the other night, flipping through page after page of stories, when finally the book opened up on the autograph page, which was, a, which was without a doubt the most anticlimactic page of the entire book. Half the people who signed didn't know me well enough to leave any kind of heartfelt message, and the other half knew me too well to take the signing seriously. I swear, I read the same message about 50 times, all worded slightly differently. Then I got to thinking that, since that's kind of the gist of a valedictorian speech, the same phrases worded differently over and over, maybe I should follow suit. So here we go. The first repeated phrase was anything along the lines of, thanks for being a friend. From Hannah's, thanks for being my lab partner sophomore year, to Madison's, thanks for putting up with me junior year, these, year, these words were everywhere. But what, they, what were they actually saying? Being a friend could mean a lot of things. It could be a quick wave in the hallway, or always giving someone a ride home after practice. It could be those quick, random acts of kindness Mr. Canetter and the rest of the homeroom teachers were harping on. But being a friend could also mean coming over at midnight when you get dumped talking to each other about those times you regret, or just being there when it seems like no one else is. We've all got a lot of friends here in this class. Don't forget to thank them for all they've done over the years. 
Now the next phrase I kept stumbling upon paging through my yearbooks was, we should hang out more. How many people here can you find who you wished you would have talked to, said hello to more? And also looking around, find those people who you did hang out with more, those people who you never could have imagined being friends with freshman year. We've all found our families and friend groups over these four years. These groups, teams, squads, will be the, the people that you always remember from high school. I know personally that I am so grateful to know and be friends with my own friend group, and I wouldn't be where I am today without them. I'm grateful for everyone I've hung out with over the years, everyone I've ever called a friend, everyone I've ever hung out with more, for the memories and the moments that I'll take with me, and I hope you all feel the same. The next phrase was, have a nice summer. It's the most basic thing to write in anyone's yearbook. We've all been there. You're writing in someone's yearbook and you don't know them quite well enough to say you'll see them over the next three months, so you settle for, have a nice summer. Now more than ever, this phrase actually means something. This is it for us. The last summer where you can call yourself a high schooler. The last summer before the biggest new adventure of your life so far. Don't let it go to waste. Hang out with your friends, your groups, while you're still in Anago. Next year, we won't have the forced proximity of classes to, and small town life to keep us together. We'll all be scattered around different cities, states, professions. Who knows where we'll end up as time goes on. So make the most of this summer when you're still surrounded by the closest friends you've ever had in your life. Finally, I kept seeing the repeated phrase, see you next year. The one constant over these four years was that we knew we would always return to Anago High School in the fall. We would be back to the same concrete halls and stuffy classrooms, always surrounded by these people, this class. Next year, though, will be different. We won't have that proximity to keep us together, to ensure that we remain friends. It's up to us to stay in touch with the people that matter, to not allow our groups to fall apart. Even if next year we don't see each other, we'll always be connected as the graduating class of 2019. This is our class, and this is our year. As we go forward, don't forget these people. I guess that's all I had to say. Congratulations, class of 2019. And for one last time, thanks for being a friend. We should hang out more. Have a nice summer, and see you next year. Seb, could you come on up here again for a minute? Welcome family, friends, and graduates. I'm Clint Rogers, and I'm proud to be the Anigo High School principal. And as I told these graduates on practice on Friday, that they are the best class that I've ever been Anigo High School principal of. <laughs> also, it has been a tradition here at Anigo High School um, for the junior class president to be the master of ceremonies. And so I'd like you to join me in thanking Brett Farmer for doing a phenomenal job with that. Also, thank you to all the volunteers, the school board members. Um, there was a lot of prep work that went into today, and they, uh, there has been a lot of hands in the pot, as, as you were to say, in getting this presentation ready for honoring these graduates. So thank you to all those volunteers. <laughs> also, if you have family or friends that couldn't make it today, it, the ceremony is being filmed. It will be on YouTube, and in fact, it's being filmed live, so be sure to direct them to uh, Anigo High School graduation 2019. Now, it is a, an absolute honor to, prevent, or to present the <laughs> valedictorian and salutatorian awards. Um, these awards are based on cumulative GPA throughout their entire four years here at Anigo High School. So, for the Salutatorian Award, I would like to present Mr. Sebastian Niskoviak. And the Valedictorian Award goes to Ms. Elise Incha. Thank you very much. Elena Weichs, National Honor Society President, will now introduce the NHS members of the class of 2019.
As I name off the members of the National Honor Society, please hold your applause to the end. Harley Anderson, Royce Bauer, Samantha Belling, Emily Bredigan, Natalie Cunningham, Colin Eldridge, Rebecca Engelbretson, Maya Gadke, Elise Incha, Corbin Krieger, Madeline Marvin, Jared McFarlane, Grant Meeks, Ashlyn Nedden, Sebastian Noskoviak, Evelyn Olson, Owen Quinlan, Jacob Peliquin, Lauren Rhine, Dane Tischendorf, Milo Whitman. Your Antigo High School National Honor Society Class of 2019. Mr. Matt Moronk will now announce the top quarter of the class. Good afternoon, everyone, and congratulations to the class of 2019. I'm honored to be standing in front of you today to announce the top quarter of this year's senior class. When your name is called, please stand and hold your applause until the end. Harley Anderson. Taylor Arrowwood, Royce Bauer, Samantha Belling, Aaron Borchert, Emily Bredigan, William Brown, Elizabeth Burkhart, Isaac Cochran, Caitlin Cronin, Natalie Cunningham, Lennon Ebo, Callan Eldridge, Rebecca Engelbretson, Amber Fleischman, Maya Gacki, Ryan Gallenberg, Nash Hintz, Hannah Husnick, Elise Incha, Daniel Eisen, Corbin Krieger, Simone Lanick, Madeline Marvin, Amaya McCann, Jared McFarlane, Grant Meeks, Logan Meyer, Ashlyn Nedden, Hannah Nunnemaker, Sebastian Niskoviak, Evelyn Olson, Jacob Peliquin, Owen Quinlan, Lauren Rhine, Carly Mae Schultz, Dominic Smith, Erica Spencer, Brianna Terrace, Dane Tischendorf, Elena Weichs, Milo Whitman, and Aaron Zerngable. Congratulations. At this time, the Board of Education members and AHS administration will now do the presentation of diplomas. Jonathan Ackley. <laughs> Peyton Adams. Jasmine Arpke. Taylor Arrowood. Isaac Baker. Royce Bauer. Right. Hannah Nunnemacher. Go, Dane. Dane Tischendorf. Go, Dane. Erica Spencer. Go, okay. Harley Anderson. Go, 
Natalie Emerald Bedford Swearington. Samantha Josephine Belling. Samantha Elise Bessert. Zachary Blonick. Erin Marie Borchert. Cassandra Ruth Bostwick. Christopher Breitenfeld. Emily Susan Bredigan. Nice job, Emily. Emma Brown. William Brown. Sean Burnett. Elizabeth Burkhart. David Clark. Shauna Clay. Isaac Cochran. Nice job, Isaac. AJ Converse. Madison Cundiff. Natalie Cunningham. Antha Del Santo. Toby Deek. Lucas Dion. Logan Doring. Lennon Ebel. Colin Eldridge. Rebecca Engelbretson. Aaron Ewan. Jacob Fisher. Amber Fleischman. Charlie Fleischman. Corey Fleischman. Jacqueline Genki. Ezekiel Philkill. Nick Fleischman. Madison Gabriel. Maya Gatke. Ryan Gallenberg. Josie Hayek.
Erica Heinzen. <laughs> Bailey Helms. Gabrielle Herman. Tyler Hickman. Nash Hints. Jet Haft. Elisa Honazi. Haley Holm. Bailey Hornbuckle. Trenton Hubach. Hannah May Husnick. Madeline Joe Eigel. Elise Rose Incha. Dan Eisen. Chandler Jarko. Dominic Johnson. Olivia Johnson. Joshua Jones. Zachary King. Theodore Coles. Samuel Kramer. Kayla Krieger. Corbin Krieger. Jameson Kunze. Eric Langseth. Simone Lanick. George Lective. CJ Levis. Jonathan Dakin Lowry. Tanner Lewick. Madeline Marvin. Brianna Mock. Amaya McCann. Jared McFarlane. Grant Meeks. Logan Meyer. Clay Miller. Alexis Musloff. Ashlyn Nedden. Amberlynn Nelson. Eric Nelson. Yeah. 
Dakota Nemitz. Haley Nicholson. James William Nigling. Sebastian Robert Niskoviak. Evelyn Faith Olson. Kyle Unson. Santiago Osa. Noah Orgeman. Allie Owens. Sarah Pelkey. Jacob Peliquin. Madeline Petrosky. Sierra Pachette. Destiny Poole. Camry Powell. Colton Powell. Summer Rose Powell. Aaliyah K. Pownell. Owen Quinlan. Lauren Rhine. Abby Robrecht. Noah Samolinski. Kyle Shuttlebauer. Jared Shell. Cassandra Schmidt. Megan Schmidt. Megan Schrader. Lucas Schwan. Devin Shields. Dominic Smith. Dylan Smith. Chloe Steber. Emily Stevenson. Benjamin Stemak. Brianna Terrace. Devin Tatro. Gage Tatro. Nicholas Tatro. Alyssa Tileman.
Hannah Pham. Lexi Tham. Marcelina Toribio. Connor Vanderweird. Jordan Verhagen. Leo Wavagal. Keegan Walrath. Dylan Warax. Logan Waters. Elena Wikes. Quinton Wesolowski. April West. Alex Wickheiser. Anthony Wildman. Milo Whitman. James Wordinger. Michael Shong. Trenton Zanin. Melissa Zeinhart. Mariah Zimmerman. Aaron Zerngibble. Sarah Brahm. Jack Brown. Giovanni Castaneda. Tia Adora Hangardner. Caitlin Cronin. If I could now have the senior class officers come to the stage and all graduates rise to turn your tassels. It is my pleasure to announce that all graduates present have satisfied the requirements for graduation from Anigo High School. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present to you the class of 2019.